Okay, today I'm going to prove by experimentation and um, double helix energy theory how the Ceres crater and all craters were made and why they have a mountain in the middle. So this is a paper that I wrote on December the 19th, 2015. So it's been a month. Um, I'm working so I haven't been able to get round to it. So what do we have here? Okay, Ceres crater electrical machining procedure. It's basically just a rundown and I'll go through it um, in pictures and videos in a minute. So we have uh, the beginning is an electrical strike, a bolt of lightning. This may be a, uh, a close approach of another body or a discharge from the atmosphere. Now in the Bible, electricity is described as living water, which is energy. Living water flows from the middle of God and anything it touches lives. It is energy. So we have a discharge to ground. The strike hits, two leaders revolve around each other uh, in a double helix. They go through each other and after touchdown they rotate to one opposite side in a circle. They rotate through each other. The left of God crosses itself. So one, the right hand rotation spins through the left and the left hand rotation spins through the right. It spins around in a halo meeting at the opposite side. These have crossed through each other. They then rotate into a vertical vortex upwards and uh, due to the vacuum of space which has now just been created by the massive electrical strike the atmosphere, atmosphere has been vaporized and then there is a vacuum and uh, the mountain that is left is there due to the vacuum created by the energy strike and all the, the molten debris that was there is immediately vacuumed into space. So water is a matter representation of electrical flow. Uh, water into um, a pan or a flat surface represents the electrical machining of matter. Uh, steam vortex shows the double helix vortex passage and a vacuum shows the machined rock travel which leaves a mountain in the middle. Conclusion, electricity in halo formation of double helix energy around uh, melting the rock and then vacuum into space. So here we go with uh, the evidence that I put forward. Okay, so what I'm showing here is the passage of electricity. Now as you can see from the water there are streamers that pour out in all directions because the energy in the water is rotating. If you pour water you will see that it rotates. It's also creating an Ouroboros torus, which is all them just on the outside of the circle. That is a lump. But we'll come to that in a minute. What I want to point out is that energy, just like water, streams outwards, just like this. So this is what happens when energy hits matter. It spins out and throws out what you see there, which is exactly the same as water travel. So basically I then went looking for a crater that would have ridges that ran down as if it was water and I found this. It was quite easy. And those ridges are here and here. Outflows from a peak that were never fully formed because they cooled too quickly. All these streaks that you see heading out, that's energy. This one too, you can see the line streaking outwards. And here, these are all different, these ones are from the moon. And there you go, there's the streaks. And there's the Ouroboros, which rotates around. And there's a crater showing from electricity, that's what it does. And if we look at God's words, he says, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the spirit which I have explained as electrical, whom those who believed in him were to receive. And it says anybody that this water touches or anything that it touches will come to life and have life. And we are electrical beings. It's, if you take away our electricity, we drop down dead. The spirit is electrical and it has been poured out on me, which is how God allowed me to see all this. Anyway, this uh, is taken from um, one of my videos about the Lorenz effect. And uh, this is basically um, showing the travel that I just described of the halo Ouroboros. This happens in smoke, it happens in steam, 
And here it is showing the double helix vortex travel of energy. So this is what the electrical strike did. It flashed out, span round in a circle, in a circle halo, double helix, as you can see, one tube inside another, one going left, one going right, crossing over, causing the double helix. This is what the energy did to the ground and machined it. Now this molten rock is then vacuumed into space because the massive electrical strike that happened um, melted everything and destroyed the atmosphere. So however uncontrolled this experiment is, I can show you by vacuums which are rotating energy upwards. Um, this is how the rock was excavated into space after being electrically machined by a rotating double helix lightning strike which then gives you these shapes and uh, this video runs for uh, four or five minutes um, and uh, you show me uh, adjusting the vacuum up and down to give you the mountains or smiley faces or just little blobs in the middle because and then after that I've got a massive couple of piles of <laughs> Um, craters showing you the insides of them and, and uh, what they look like. Now as you can see all the rock has been machined up in streamers because that's how a vortex works one tiny little vortex becomes a huge vortex so you can see all the lines that are created and then they are vacuumed away some are still there but if it's a full vacuum they won't be there as you can see there they just disappear a slight vacuum will freeze things solid where they stand and so you get your mountain and your wibbly wobbly ridges around the edges because it's a vortex that's pulling it all up and a vortex moves in a double helix. So as you can see um, they're pretty much all the same and the mountain in the center is only changed um, by the vacuum height. The closer I go, the more is machined out. There's your smiley face. The more is machined out. The higher the vacuum off the ground, the more you'll get a mountain. So full vacuum, nothing in the center. Mountain in the center, it cooled rapidly and the vacuum wasn't as low to the ground. And now here's my work against um, about 15 pictures of uh, craters, which I and the electric universe say is caused by electricity. And uh, mainstream science say it was a, a meteor impact, except all the rock was vaporized and is now dust, which is ridiculous really, because they can't actually uh, show an experiment where that happens. You end up with comet debris if your experiment smashes one thing into another you get pieces there's no pieces because it's an electrical strike the atmosphere was destroyed creating a vacuum into space and so again I've used experimentation and observational evidence um, that what I say is correct so if you're wondering where all the rocks in space came from you can be pretty well guaranteed that if this theory is correct then um, they came from the planets which is why they're all so badly misshapen and uh, obviously most of them um, shouldn't be in orbit around things because it's just ridiculous lumps of rock and if you go and have a look at Pluto's moons and all those kind of things you will find this exact same pattern on it so yeah the picture on the left was caused by the picture on the right and I do believe that's what God has planned 
for the earth destruction as written in the Bible. Thanks very much. My name is Lee and I'm a Christian.